Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today, this video is a long time in the making. This is a brand new series, and the first episode we're going to be doing here is how do you buy a laptop? Uh, this is a question in so many ways I get asked, and I figured after about five plus years of running this channel, I'm looking at over 100 laptops. You can see a playlist over here. I thought it was time to kind of boil it down to the big four questions that I always ask people when they say, what do I need to buy to do whatever? And I see this in the comment section all the time. So if you have been pointed to this video in the comment section, this video was specifically built for you to answer your question in detail, more detail than I can uh, unfortunately afford every commenter. So four things. Number one, you need to decide what you need. And we need to define need because there's a difference between need, want, and what will make you happy. And I'm being serious. This is not a, you know, look at yourself in the mirror. This is a genuine question that you need to be able to ask yourself. Uh, for example, do you need, want, or would you be happy with how much uh, CPU power you have, the battery life, the color accuracy of the display? the ports available, the portability, and of course, the durability. You also need to consider system requirements. This is the big thing that people often overlook. Every piece of software made by any reputable uh, developer is going to have a list of system requirements, usually minimum and recommended, that you, that you can use to buy a machine. And like, take some time to look at those because you might actually be able to buy something used or older or less expensive that'll perfectly meet all of your needs and you don't need to fall into the I need the absolute best because of future proofing trap that is becoming slightly less relevant as time marches forward. And we can see that because all of the machines on the table here are perfectly serviceable depending on the task and none of them are new. One of the most popular questions I get asked is can I program on this laptop uh, that I featured on the channel? And most of the time, the answer is, well, it depends on the programming you're doing, but probably. Um, a lot of programming language can be written on a laptop that doesn't have a whole lot of demanding components. Now, if you're compiling or running virtual machines, uh, that's a different story. Um, but again, if you don't know the answers to these questions, then maybe you need to talk to a programmer to make sure that you're actually buying the hardware that you need. Lean on that person's experience. The other thing, of course, to consider is the service life or the upgradability. Uh, some machines will have everything soldered on, others you'll be able to open up and pretty much remove any components that you need and swap them out. Now keep in mind that that'll either come at a cost premium or a generation premium, but if that's what you value, if that's more important than having the latest and greatest specs, then that's something that you need to be honest about. It comes back to what do you need, want, and what will make you happy. The last thing I'll mention, of course, is uh, warranty and downtime. If you're buying something new, and you buy yourself a, you know, a nice big juicy warranty, then that is, means that you are going to probably spend less time if there is an issue uh, without a device. And if that is absolutely important, if you're running a small business, or even if you're a student and you're like, no, I gotta have this machine every single day, then those are things that you will want to invest to ensure that you stay happy. Um, they will help you meet your needs. And if you don't have those needs, then don't spend money on those things that you're not going to appreciate. I see a few people always comment about, you know, the kind of the pros and cons of warranties, and that's exactly what they are, are pros and cons. So just keep that in mind. Now, the next thing that we need to discuss, number two, is what can you afford? You need to be realistic about this. Uh, your budget will not be unlimited, likely. Um, and you need to think about what you are going to uh, wait on for the price to go down and what you're going to have to compromise on. So a lot of people want a super fast gaming computer. And they want to have the latest GPU so they can run their games at 1080p and whatever frame rate. And if you're buying brand new, again, this goes back to system requirements, you are going to pay a premium for the latest and greatest. However, if you know your system requirements and you know that a older machine will do the same job, you might be able to bring that budget and your needs, wants, and your desires uh, more back into line with one another but you do need to be realistic about how much money you have and then go back and look at number one to make sure that they line up. Because if number one does not line up with number two, 
then you are going to have a problem that you really can't solve without financing or outside help. The third thing that you need to consider, of course, is where can you actually buy the device that you're looking to purchase. Now, you have two main options. You can either buy it in person or online. Now, in person, that is going to limit you to essentially uh, retail stores, uh, maybe a local refurbisher or local classifieds. All three are perfectly fine, but you need to just keep in mind that the desires of the other end of the table. You just want to understand that those are gonna look and feel very, very different and your level of comfort with those environments is something to take into consideration. Are you in a situation where you're going to know more than the retail person helping you? I would argue that if you don't, then, you know, buyer beware. Your other options, of course, are a series of online sellers. This could be eBay, any kind of digital marketplace like Amazon. And if you know what you're doing, then there are a lot of bargains uh, to be found. But also be on the lookout for anything that sounds too good to be true, because that probably is. Or it means that you're going to have to put in some additional work or know-how to get it up to running to what you need it to do. And that is, of course, something you always want to consider, is how reputable is your seller? How many transactions do they do? How satisfied are those customers? Are there any pain points? Are there any stories online? If you have every second person having a bad experience with that seller, then that's probably a good sign that you don't want to take a 50-50 coin toss. But if you have somebody on eBay with like a 98.9 .9 approval rating and over 10,000 transactions, that's a very, very different uh, level of risk than even 80% with 40 transactions. The fourth thing to consider, and I've kind of alluded to it a little bit throughout this video, is whether or not you buy something brand new or used. The very first thing that you have to do before you make that decision is you need to consider points one through three that we've already looked at in this video. What you need, what you can afford, and where can you buy it? Because those three things will dictate what's available to you. For example, if you know what you need, and you know what you can afford, and you know that there isn't any place that you can buy it, <laughs> then there is a problem there that you need to solve before you decide new or used. I have these four machines in front of me, and they are all used, and they are in various different states of use. So there's a T430, a uh, P50, an X1 Carbon Gen 5, and then this X390 Yoga. Now, this X390 Yoga has got some pretty decent battle damage, but it is 100% functional, and because of that, you know that you're going to be able to get it at a reduced rate. So if things like a crunched corner like this, when the display is perfectly fine, or a bottom that's had some serious desk wear, if these things don't bother you and the inside of this looks like a desirable little unit and works perfectly fine, there are cost savings to be had. Obviously, you want to make sure that all the components work, and I do know because they've been tested by someone that I trust. And then there are other things like this X1 Carbon Gen 5, which came from Waukegan Computers, which is a refurbisher in the States, and they did a fantastic job uh, restoring this thing to factory condition. Uh, but of course, you are going to pay a bit of a premium for that. This P50 here actually came from a reseller in... Uh, British Columbia, I believe, out of their warehouse, and it was pretty much in immaculate condition and paid uh, very, very little for it uh, because it was being sold as surplus. So I'm kind of on my own to make sure that it works, but the savings were pretty significant. And then, of course, you have your tried and true T430, um, which is just a kind of a tinkerer's dream, and I've you know taken apart and examined uh, just about all these machines on the channel. And ultimately, what it comes down to, though, is what you actually value in those first three, is whether or not new or used is important. If you need warranty, if you need to have the latest and greatest, then new is kind of your only option. If the warranty isn't that important and you are able to make do because you know what you need with something older, you're going to be able to save a little bit of money and you're going to be able to buy used so long as you can find a good deal from a reputable seller. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you found this information useful. Remember those four big points and I'll put them up on the screen one last time for you as we close out the video. If there are other topics that you think that I would be able to provide useful information on, please leave them in the comment section down below because I would like to continue this. I think I've gathered a fair bit of knowledge over the years that I can share with people like you that might be first time viewers of the channel or just long time veterans that uh, enjoy hearing what I have to say. 
If you are looking to support the channel, I'll leave all of the YouTube stuff over here. And thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.